Right. So first we had go home vans. You're not welcome here. Messaging. Britain is full narratives. Tory meanness. Cruelty. Impassive dismissal of people coming here, applying for asylum. Never mind that we've closed every legal route to them, save for those from a country there might be some political capital to be made out of allowing people in from. And as much as we can be appalled by this, those of us in possession of an ounce of empathy in our bodies, those of us not devoid of basic human kindness, there will be those broadly in support of stopping the boats. Some may well fear for people's safety and wanting them stopped. I think most of us would rather see alternative routes applied when we say we want the boat stopped. But that isn't Tory policy, of course. It's stop the boats, stop these people coming here full stop. And that narrative has been promoted in the media heavily, along with very right-wing Tory rhetoric, such as demanding the boats get turned around at sea, attacks on the RNLI for daring to rescue people in trouble when it is literally the reason they exist, narratives selling a vision of all those arriving being young men when that is not at all necessarily the case. And reinforcing that is the fact a Kent refugee centre was bedecked with cartoons of Mickey Mouse or Tom and Jerry, because so many of those arriving are not adults at all, but children, young children. Now, perhaps I'm wrong. Perhaps I've missed it somewhere. But never as much as the Tory migrant bashing is offensive and ignorant and racist and cruel, I've never yet seen migrant children get specifically targeted. To what end would that be effective anyway? They get brought by others, not of their own volition. They're not targeted specifically until now. At any rate, this is a, a story the mainstream have actually run with, but I couldn't let it go without passing comment on it myself because it's disgusted me. And because sociopathic doesn't seem to be a big enough word to cover the unnecessarily nastiness of Immigration Minister Robert Jenrick. Now, it's not as if we didn't know Jenrick was a truly awful individual before now. Trying to help a billionaire avoid tax on a housing development was probably the best known scandal he'd been involved in. But he was also involved in the same Rwanda charity project for lawyers Suella Braverman was. So is it any wonder the country has become that much crueler with these two inhuman monsters making policy in the Home Office? Little wonder the Rwanda obsession pervades. What is it with Home Office ministers trying to out-nasty each other? Preeti Patel and the Rwanda scheme. She's the one that started it all. Braverman trying to out-nasty her by expanding it. And now Jenrick trying to top them both by deciding to go after migrant kids. Though it wasn't all that long ago, Braverman was wanting to x-ray them to check they really were kids and not just very small men. I did another video on that one. You can watch that. Jenrick has, though, uh, sticking with this one, as I'm sure you're aware of by now, ordered murals painted in, the re in that refugee centre to be painted over. Images designed to appeal to children because he felt they were too welcoming. And it appears Jenrick never was a child, nor has any idea how children react and behave, especially in unfamiliar surroundings, despite having three children of his own. Do they all look like this when he's at home, I wonder? Just what kind of adult, person in a position of power, picks on kids for likes, because that is effectively what he's done here. The culture war the Tories have embarked on in order to try and win votes now involves making even children feel as unwelcome, unwanted and disliked as possible. Can you imagine the terror they'll have been through crossing the channel in a small boat? Place yourselves in their shoes for a minute. Think of something that scared you as a child and compare that situation to what these kids may have been through. It's not like kids get to choose. They get taken along with their parents or other adults. They the ones choosing to come here, apply for asylum here, as is their choice for whatever their reasons, but one of them you can bet your bottom dollar as a parent or a guardian certainly is the belief that where you are going and what you are doing is to ensure your child has a better chance in life because opportunities, because no way in hell would you risk your own child's life for any, any other reason. No parent would. Though in Jenrick's case, maybe that sentiment, that basic sense of humanity is completely absent. Did you know Robert Jenrick is married to the daughter of Holocaust survivors? His own family history is not incomparable, therefore, yet still, this is where he goes with his thinking. It's more than disturbing, it's positively deviant. I wonder what his wife thinks of all of this. He ordered those murals painted over because they were too welcoming. Kids in shock, scared, in a strange country, perhaps not understanding the language, certainly likely not understanding what is going on when you consider the age group of kids such cartoons are designed to appeal to. They're for little ones, after all. A basic friendly, familiar face. The universality of the image of Mickey Mouse, for instance, is just a simple thing that help, would help reduce fear. Jenrick would rather instill fear, it seems. We don't want these kids to feel welcome. We want them scared. We want them afraid. They won't come back once we deport them that way. This will win us votes. Is it winning your vote, though? 
Is this the kind of anti-immigrant thing you approve of? Is picking on the kids, as this act inherently does, something you support? It's probably one of the single most ghastly things I can ever remember any government minister from any party ever actually doing. Not just because of who it targets, but also because of the complete needlessness of it. How utterly unnecessary it was. Even people in the refugee centre were appalled at the directive and sought to find ways to avoid carrying out the order. But the murals were gone as of last Tuesday. Evil, frankly, and it isn't a big enough word for what Jenrick did, because it's the very least he should be described as, and that can only be backed up when you look at some of the truly awful people for whom Jenrick's callousness here was a step too far. Nigel Farage, Mr. Stand on the clifftops and pointed the boats coming over and said, whilst those crossing the channel should not get four-star treatment, this measure is a bit mean. Well, don't pull your punches, Nigel. You can call it a bit mean if you like. You can go a little bit further. I do. I call it fucking depraved. But still, when even Farage won't support an anti-migrant measure, that surely speaks volumes. More moderate members of the Tory party, if you can call any of them such a thing, are appalled as well. Don't imagine for one moment Jenrick will face censure over this because Rishi Sunak has, of course, backed him up, putting the Tories to the right of Nigel Flaming Farage on immigration. Like I said before, though, a culture war, stoking up hatred of others. It's all the Tories have got left in the tank. So little wonder they're plummeting in the polls. And after stories like this, well, they deserve every last bit of it. It's a deterrent, they say. Parents will think twice if we terrify and scar for life their children. Seems to be Tory policy now. Never mind the state the country is in. Let's paint over Mickey Mouse and give hard right fascists a cheap thrill and win their votes. It's embarrassing for the UK as a country. And for us right-thinking folk who live in it. It's shameless. We'll be even more despised and looked down on by other more empathetic nations as the island of nastiness we've allowed ourselves to become. This is Iron Curtain style stuff. They'd have called it banishing westernized propaganda back in the day. You could say the same about North Korea. We just need Laura Koonsberg dressed in a kimono to come on and start exalting our glorious leader next. Though, thankfully, even our mainstream media haven't yet jumped that particular shark yet. This is just abject cruelty inflicted against scared children. There's no deterrent effect in this. A friendly cartoon face can be the first thing a frightened, cold, wet kid turning up in just the clothes on their back sees. But Jenrick thinks it's too welcoming. Why would you not want to provide a warm welcome to a child anyway? Set the politics of immigration aside completely for a minute. You, a person, have a scared kid in front of you. At the end of the day, is your motivation going to be to keep them that way? Because I know it's not mine. Regular viewers will know I care little for the alternative to this Tory government, but my God, they can't go fast enough when the kind of people in power are the kind of people like Robert Jenrick who thinks like this. Jenrick deserves to have Mickey Mouse pictures tweeted at him in every social media post he makes from now until the day he dies to remind him that he's made this issue his legacy, that this is actually what he's going to be remembered for in years to come. And him losing his seat will truly be an event to celebrate. He has a majority not dissimilar to that the, the Tories currently have for Selby and Ainsty, where Labour are currently polling 12 points ahead in a by-election for 12 days' time. Poised to overturn it. So Newark can get rid of this obscenity from Parliament too when the next general election comes. The MP who gets off on kids being made to feel unwelcome, and he doesn't even live in the constituency either. Surely you don't want him representing you a moment longer than you have to, Newark. Thanks for watching. Please do like, share and subscribe if you've enjoyed the vid. Here's another recommendation for you to keep you with the channel some more where the illegal migration bill has suffered some significant setbacks. And in light of Jenrick's actions, we can take some pleasure in that, I think. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.